What's up? I just want to give you a quick heads up. When I'm talking in this clip, my voice is distorted, so I want to make sure you're able to adjust the volume for your ears or whatever, make sure they don't hurt. But the conversation is too good for you not to hear it, so we went ahead and made the clip anyway. This is from episode four of No Labels Necessary. The future episodes are just fine audio-wise. Check this out. The information is too good to miss. Let's bring up this next topic, though. Rest took over the Egypts. No, <laughs> Russ took over the pyramids of Egypt. I'll just show this quick little clip. All right, the audio is less important though. The point is he took over the pyramids of Egypt. He did a performance right in front of the pyramids. It's a great, great look. Just the, the scenery of it, that image of it. And there's so many things that I like about it, right? I think they said technically like he was like the first artist, right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere. I don't know where that was. Yeah, I saw it on some clip. Yeah, he was like the first artist to, to take over the pyramids of Egypt. And one, being the first is valuable. There's a narrative there, yep. right? And yo, there's probably so many places in the world that you could just be the first. <laughs> yeah. like, Russ isn't the biggest artist in the world. We know that there's many artists that if they wanted to they could have done this and yeah. been the first yeah. right so i don't hey are you gonna do it in front of niagara falls you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> like weird eighth wonders 100th wonders there's so many places that you can do a concert right yeah. um and you know i think he has the benefit of having a fan base that's there too right which is different the way he came up like he actually had like Liberia, Egypt, and uh, somewhere in some places in the Middle East. Uh, some of them actually, because of his look, actually, I remember talking to a guy, they thought that he was one of them. I think it was like Persia or something. That's funny. Yeah, yeah. He actually <laughs> finessed and leaned into it for a second, rest apparently, because the guy was kind of salty when he was <laughs> when he was talking about it or whatever. But um, like being the first is a huge advantage so that goes back to creativity right mm -hmm. we, we keep talking about being creative uh, being creative so you have this narrative of being the first and whatever this is right that ma that makes it matter instantly more but then just the image though mm -hmm. it's a dope image and as an artist you know it's one of those things that begins to sound narcissistic when you think about artists um talking and their legacy and how they're going to be seen in the future but truly, if you think, man, this is going to be a great look, me in front of some pyramids and that image lasting, like... That shit iconic. Exactly. Yeah. It's a great image. So you have to think about, like, how can I put myself in a position to look uh, great? Just, yeah. just like we do the camera angles and it'll be nobody at the club, but it looks lit because we did the right camera put angle. Put on the right 20 people. It's the same <laughs> game at scale. That's all it is, right? So how can you find a position and give yourself a good look, man? I think this is this is that to a T. Like Russ, Russ killed this one. I don't know who gave him that idea. Yeah, and it's such a unique first too because like who would have thought to do that? I mean, like other That's than Russ saying. apparently. And it's cool because like the whole first thing can always branch because like, all right, Russ, you know, first artist in the pyramids and I don't know, some artist comes along, hey, now you the first black artist to do a show at the pyramids and then you know yep. two years later now you're the first latino artist to do it role. you're the first country like so many different ways you can branch the whole first conversation yep they're like i like it because it's like man he looked outside of just like regular music first you know what i'm saying uh, or even just i think a lot of music artists focus more on like breaking records and being the first a lot of the time you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. i guess at this point it's, it's only it's probably perceived like there's only so many firsts you can do now like that right very slim we can break some shit that somebody already did See, but that's when you're looking inside that box, though. Yeah. Right? Because if you're looking at stadiums and all them type of things, yeah. which was a really, you know, a thing. Oh, I'm the first artist to perform in Madison Square Garden. I feel like like when Jay-Z performed in Madison Square Garden, it was a big deal for some reason. I think he was the first rapper? Something. It was, it was something like that, right? But, <laughs> yeah. But, oh, wait. Let me just look outside of these pre-established venues. Yeah. Right? And now it's easy to be the first and the easy to be the biggest concert, right? Because I'm yeah. the only concert. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. We're in a world where it's a lot cheaper to do stuff like that than it used to. This probably would have been, I mean, you know, this is probably still pretty expensive because it's rushing the concert or whatever. But, you know, getting your own team together, you can get in different locations and have high quality videos and moments for way cheaper yeah. than you used to. Yeah, and cause of, I would say because of technology too, like we, we get a lot of first kind of thrown at us because 
remember when NFTs and like the whole metaverse thing first kicked off, but it was a lot of those headlines. Such and such artist is the first artist to sell an NFT. Such and such oh, artist yeah. is the first rapper to sell an NFT. This is the first artist. Right now, they like the mainstream industry took advantage of that to just like build out. We were working with an artist that was trying to do the whole, I'm the first to do this thing in yes. this space. You that know shit saying? gets annoying too. Yeah. From the marketer <laughs> side, I must say. Uh, y'all, so the first, while we say what we're saying, right? The first doesn't always have value. Yeah. Right? Like, it has to be done in a way that people care. Right? And, all right, I'll actually say this. If you get people to be aware, people will care and remember it. It's something that sticks. But a lot of times, people think being the first is going to create the attention. Yeah. And that's not necessarily so. If people don't care yet, because you're the first one to do it. <laughs> exactly. Which shows that no, nobody was checking for that. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. But he just let us know, oh, I found this, like, this Hello Yassin shit. And I don't know if he, I, he probably got paid for that. You know, he probably got paid and posted this. Mm, him? I don't know. Mm, I don't know. If, you look, if you look at this, oh, this, this is very... This is very, I get paid for post format. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I, I'm only going to say yes because That's I'm it. suspicious of everything. Look at this. There's no way my page will look like this and I'm not getting paid for post. <laughs> like, this is just, this is that. This is that. And then he has the, the rest of the, uh, the, the platform on YouTube and all that stuff. Yeah. Nah. I mean, now he might not have gotten paid for this, but if he's not getting paid for post, Come on, nah, nah. I, 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 it's no way. The way he, I've seen him move, I don't know everything about him. I don't know, him. too, because he's a, he's a Rush fan. Like, on his channel, he talks about being a Rush fan. And, like, I think, like, it's like DJ Academics. Like, DJ Academics admits that he gets paid by most labels, but, like, he also posts okay. things that he knows is going to get him attention. So, I could, I could, I could kind of see that same route. Okay. Like, you know what that means? He's a Rush fan, and Rush is smart. We know that Russell's smart. Yeah. And he pays attention to these <laughs> types of things more than most artists because, He's not so reliant on labels, yeah. right? So this type of independent outlet matters, which means with his platform, hello, y'all seems, and all of y'all should take note on something like this. I don't know if it's actually true, but like if I was Russ, right? And hello, y'all seen was a fan of mine with the level, out. with the yellow platform. Yeah. Yes. I would actually talk yeah. to him at some yeah, point. I'm reaching out. Yeah, I'm reaching out. We yeah. would have a relationship because <laughs> he's third party. He's not within the mix, right? He's mm -hmm. not in the group, which means I can get direct access, probably not be overcharged or just worried about all these gatekeepers, favors, and all those additional things. Mm -hmm. And somebody like Yasin will get a great look from being connected to me. There's a lot of value to that. Maybe one day we do a real interview, at the very least, he has access to somebody, the type of person that he normally doesn't have access to, being mm -hmm. a third party, because people don't respect those. Like, there's no way. So. Again, if he didn't get paid for this, he did it off a of relationship sake. Yeah. All right. I can see that. Like, because I don't even know if I saw any other page talking about that. So I could see him being like, hey, hey, bro, I fuck with you. Here go the scoop. Hey. You know what I'm saying? Break this. Because I don't want to go to these academics. I don't want to go whatever. But actually, I'll have to look more into that to see that before I stand on that. But I don't think I saw it anywhere else. I, I did not see it anywhere else, to yeah. be real. You know, again, do people care? Yeah. That's true. You know, do people care? Though so you have to make a lot of people aware for them to truly care. Because it is something really dope. I think a lot of people would like, it's an image you are not going to forget. Yeah. So that's the thing. So to hear something and then follow it up with an image like that, oh yeah. Like it'll be drawn in people's mind. A lot of people who don't even know who Russ is would be like, oh yeah, that was that rapper who performed in Egypt. Yeah, right? exactly. Like, but that's it, something to remember. It creates like a random fun fact. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You like, because you see it and you like, damn, wasn't he the first person to go on in right. Egypt? Now you're Googling it, you're looking it up, trying to say, damn, man, he was the first person yeah. over there, bro. That right there, crazy. Bro. Fun fact. Yeah. That's like the another way to think yeah. about the value of narratives. If your narrative can become at least a fun fact to people who don't care about you, yeah. that means that thing is going to stick. There's yeah. some power in that narrative because Again, a narrative is nothing but a thought. It's a meme. And your goal is to get people to know one thing about you and then get them to know another thing. So that person who didn't care about you and don't know much about you, they can, they know that one thing you performed in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But next time they see, oh, wait, what? The, the rapper who performed in Egypt, the first 
rapper to perform in Egypt came out with a song. Yeah. Hmm. I remember that. Let me check out that because now I know <laughs> him in some sense. Let yeah. me let me see. I like the song. Oh snap. Now I know one thing about him and I like a song. And then you hear a third loop. Yeah. That song and the rapper and, and this oh, this is the same guy who performed in Egypt and then I don't know, he punches Quando Rondo. That was a real big, right? No, that wasn't Quando Rondo. It was uh, Smoke Perk. No, it wasn't Smoke Perk. It was somebody else. It was uh uh we're gonna say Quando Rondo, even though that's not a fact for the sake of example. <laughs> right? So you know the rapper in Egypt just punched Quando Rondo and um fourth out Guap Dad. Oh, okay, yeah. Guap yeah, Dad. Yeah. They had a little fight. Yeah. That's yeah, what it was, yeah, right? That, yeah. So now you got three facts about this person. Me, 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 right? Oh, yeah. that person collaborated. So you can go any direction, right? It could be, oh, you collaborated with this, or you get or you could just get people to know three of your songs and love three of your songs. They love four of your songs. But these side narratives help just as much and help bring attention to more of your songs. It's really the the step by step version of what you're trying to accomplish that we talked about last time is creating a brand that that people love enough to give you another chance. Mm -hmm. All right. I like you. And because I know so much about you, I'm going to see what's happening. Right. If your brother like drops some music, you'd be like, all right, that shit was trash. <laughs> you know, then he dropped another song. You probably check out the next one <laughs> enough. Right. And then, okay, you might start ignoring it. it was like, all right, I'm not going to listen to every single one because, like, you you feeling pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> but if you finally, one finally, you know, starts to hit a little bit, you're like, all right, little bro, kind of good. <laughs> Something happening. And you're going to want him to win. You're going to want him to win eventually. But you also going to, you know, not give clout where where, <laughs> where it's not due. <laughs> That's all we're saying. <laughs> I'm all about not to earn that support. You're gonna, you're gonna have, you to, have earn to earn it. it. You're gonna have to earn it. You gonna want it for him, but you ain't, but you ain't gonna give it easy, right? Yeah, maybe up until like song. If he, it depends on how many in a row are bad, you know. Because I see potential <laughs> in one. Like, okay, this isn't great, but like, all right, I see where you potential. Where you at with little bro? If it's just like five, just like, mm, no, nah, you gotta stop, man. Like, <laughs> around number five, I'm like, hey, little bro, look, I want you to know the other paths in the music industry. Everybody doesn't have to be a rapper. Hey. <laughs> Everybody don't have to be a fat rapper. Facts. <laughs> Appreciate you watching. Fun fact, every time you soak up one of these gems, you get a little bit smarter from these clips. So if you want to be a gem seeker, collect all the gems, keep watching. I'll see you in the next clip.